For your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Charlie Maxwell, Johnny. Oh, hello, Mr. Maxwell. I got a Max... job for you. We insure oh, that's Mr. Well. Frank Meadows lives in Newport, California. He was killed last night. Oh, is Max... that? How long will it take you to pack and catch a plane? Oh, it's... Look a... up Lieutenant Sullivan, Newport Police, when you get there, Johnny. Yeah. Have I'll... a good trip. Yeah, I'll try, Mr. Maxwell. <laughs> Right now, I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to pass on a thought which, incidentally, concerns time. According to the Bible, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. We all agree on that, I'm sure. And we'll also agree that the regulation of time also depends on the season. For example... Did it ever occur to you who decided where our four time zones in America should be exactly? Well, back maybe 75 years ago, there were about 150 different time zones which were set up according to the whim of the local inhabitants. Most of the time was called sun time. And there could be 15 minutes difference between the clocks of two towns only 10 miles apart. So to get rid of the confusion, the Interstate Commerce Commission was established. It divided the United States into four standard time zones so that railroads, planes, buses, and the mail could run on schedule. Of course, if a city wants to go on daylight saving time during the summer, that's a decision which is made locally. The standard time remains the same everywhere else. But setting the nation's clocks isn't the only job of the Interstate Commerce Commission, however. It also makes rules and regulations for the various means of transportation which go from one state to another. It sees that railroads, truck lines, barges, and boats operate safely, charge reasonable rates, and give good, dependable service. It also protects trucks and bus drivers from working such long hours that they might fall asleep while they're driving. The commission also demands that trains, engines, and machines have safety and stop devices. It is, in itself, a safety device to assure every one of us freedom from danger as we travel about our country. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Universal Bonding and Indemnity Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Barton Baker matters. Expense account item one, $195.80. Plane fare and incidentals from Hartford to Los Angeles. I arrived at International Airport at 11 the morning of the 26th and rented a car there. An hour later, I was pulling into Newport, a sea town not far down the coast. At the police station, I met Lieutenant Solomon and we discussed the case. Frank Meadows ran a boat chartering service. Did you know him? Yeah. Excuse me. Open a window. Sure has been hot the last couple of days. Like a cold drink or something? No, no thanks. Well, we got a report on the shots, and when we got there, Frank was dead. Shot three times. He had a gun been fired twice. Obviously shot it out with somebody. Any suspects? His partner, Dave Geller, owned the boat with Charlie. What makes you think Geller did it? I well, don't know for sure, but he's missing. Disappeared. Nothing else? No. But it's the only thing we've got to go on. Any reason why Geller would kill Meadows? None that we know of. I know Dave as well as I did Frank. They always seem to get along, never heard of any argument. But you know how those things are. A couple of guys get along fine for years, and then some little thing comes yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Might be a woman. Just a woman or some particular woman? Frank has a wife. And Geller? No, he's not married. What's Mrs. Meadows like? Well, you got to talk to her anyway, don't you? Yeah. Then you can see for yourself. I'd say she was a kind that might cause a lot of trouble under the right circumstances. But that's only a personal observation. You might not think so at all. Here's the address. Well, thanks, Lieutenant. I'll let you know. Do that. Hey, 
Ten minutes later, I was pulling up to a pleasant little house to face the bay. Mrs. Meadows met me at the front door. I don't generally make snap judgments, but at first sight, I was inclined to go along with the lieutenant. Mrs. Meadows was very attractive. Tan, blonde, and could have been in mourning, but I doubted it. Even though her tight bathing suit was black. I introduced myself, and she showed me into the living room. Sit down, Mr. Dollar. Thank you. You'll have to forgive me. I've been getting some sun. Oh, I don't mind. I practically live in a bathing suit during the summer. Surprise the beach isn't more crowded. Steal from the insurance company. That's right. I was sent out to investigate your husband's death. I'll be glad to help any way I can. I'd appreciate it. How much was my husband insured for? Don't you know? I have no idea. I knew he had insurance, but I never knew how much. Twenty-five thousand. That much? Should buy you a lot of sun. When will I get it? Well, in a case like this, a murder has to be a complete investigation. And it's generally considered proper to bury the deceased before issuing a check. Uh, by the way, when is the funeral? It was this morning at 8 o'clock. What did they do? Dump him off a surfboard? I don't think I like that, Mr. Dollar. Oh, I'm just being a little sadistic. I always get that way when I see someone so broken up. Would it be better if I stayed in the house for a week and wore a black veil? Oh, no, no. But a little emotion would seem more natural. Would it help if I cried? Help who? Mr. Dollar, my husband's dead. Anything I might do wouldn't bring him back. If you don't approve, I'm afraid that's just too bad. Who do you think killed your husband? I have no idea. The police suspect his partner. I guess it's possible. Dave's missing. Can you think of any reason why Dave would kill your husband? They didn't get along too well. Lieutenant Solomon says they got along just fine. And I say they didn't. I think I know more about it than Lieutenant Solomon. Okay. Suppose you tell me why they didn't get along. They just didn't. They disagreed a lot. Over anything specific? Mm, not particularly. The boat, things in general. They'd known each other for years, been partners for nearly ten. Friendships wear thin sometimes. Before they left on the trip, they had an argument. About what? Frank didn't tell me. Just came home and said he'd had a fight with Dave. The next morning, they left. The following morning, when they returned, Lieutenant Solomon called me and said Frank had been killed. Where did they go? Down the coast after Yellowtail. Who chartered the boat? No one. They went alone. Well, thank you, Mrs. Meadows. If you happen to hear from Dave, get in touch with the police, will you? It was going on four o'clock when I left Mrs. Meadows standing in the doorway in her black bathing suit. I drove to a motel on the bay and was shown to my room, where I called Lieutenant Solomon. I wanted to take a look at the boat. You'll find it at Carlson's Landing, the j -Bell. Mrs. Meadows says her husband and Geller went fishing for yellowtail. Yeah. They catch any? They did. They didn't bring them back. No fish on the boat. Maybe they didn't really go fishing. Got any ideas? No, not a one. Just a guess. Trying to create a motive. What do you think of Mrs. Meadows? Oh, very attractive. But not a good enough motive? I didn't say that. I was just trying to come up with a better one. If you do, let me know. After meeting Mrs. Meadows, it won't be easy. You having her watch? If Dave Geller tries to contact her, we'll know about it. Mm -hmm. Hey, where's a good place to eat? You like seafood? Oh, by the ton. Try the restaurant right next to your motel. Rio Marina. Steam clams are great. Lieutenant, you have just created a glutton. Expense account item two, $6.50 for a seafood dinner. While the bucket of clams digested, I drove to Carlson's Landing, where I located the J-Bell, Meadows and Geller's trim little fishing boat. A full moon was out over the Pacific, and the J-Bell rocked gently with the motion of the tide. The landing was deserted, except for a big gray cat that scurried onto one of the other boats as I walked past. I stood looking at the J-Bell for a minute, listening to the sounds of the ocean, then I climbed aboard. The hatch leading below to the cabin was unlocked, so I opened it and went down the short ladder. The moonlight sifted in through the starboard porthole, 
But the rest of the cabin was in pitch darkness. I felt around for some kind of light. Stay right where you are. Huh? Don't move. I got a gun. Okay. I can see you. If you move a finger, I'll kill you. Okay, okay. I'm not moving. Well, what happens? Do we stay here all night? No. Better take a look at you. I don't want to make a mistake. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Light switch is right behind you to your left. But keep facing me. Just reach back. Thought so. You thought so what? Baker sent you. Baker? You're not a cop. I know the cops in town. You must be Dave Geller. You know I'm Geller. Look, my name is Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. Sure. I'll show you my credentials. Keep your hands at your sides. I'm telling you the truth. I work for the Universal Bonding and Indemnity. Your ex-partner was insured with us. Turn around. Put your hands over your head. Look, I'm telling... You look. I'm not kidding, mister. Okay. Now put them out in front and lean on the bulkhead. My wallet's in the inside left coat pocket. Insurance investigators always carry guns. Well, most of them take them off when they go to bed. That's very funny. I'm glad you liked it. You'll find the permit for the gun in the wallet. And the wallet is still Shut in up. my... In you satisfied? Turn around. But keep your hands up. Well, you saw the identification. Okay, sir. You're an insurance investigator. Still doesn't help me. Just what kind of help were you expecting? None. I mean, now I've got to do something with you. Can't let you go back to the police and tell them you found me. They'll nail you sooner or later. They want you for murder. Yeah, I know. Why did you kill him? I didn't. Then what are you hiding for? That's none of your business. All right, now we're back to me. What happened? We'll just have to stick around for a while. Sure. Hold it. What's the matter? Somebody's coming. Turn off that light, quick. You just stay where you are and don't make a sound. Probably the police. If it is, you're going to take me out of here. Yeah, for a guy who's in a shot. Right outside the boat. Yeah, I thought so, too. Maybe your hunch was right. Listen. Yeah, that's right. You can only say it once. If something happens to me, get to Bernie's garage, understand? Bernie's garage? Come aboard. What do I do at Bernie's garage? I don't know why I'm trusting you, but i got to trust somebody. Tell Bernie I sent you. Ask him for the toolkit. The toolkit? And I didn't kill Frank. Look out, I'm going topside. He went up the ladder and out on deck, holding his gun in front of him. I thought about trying to stop him, but he moved too fast. And besides, he had my gun stuck in his belt. I was going up the ladder when the shooting started, and being a practical man, I stopped halfway up and ducked. After a moment, I looked up through the hatch... And there, standing in the moonlight, was a tall, thin man dressed in a white suit. He was holding a gun, pointed right at my head. Well, good evening. Who got killed? Your friend, Mr. Geller. And now it looks like your turn, Mr. Dollar. Johnny Dollar. How do you do? My name's Baker. Barton W. Baker. You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? He was descended from an English family which landed in Plymouth in 1624 and was a native of Ohio. In the late 1880s, he was a newspaper editor in that state, and as senator in 1900, he opposed federal control of food and fuel. As president, he supported prohibition and back the 19th Amendment, which gave women the voting privilege. His administration also saw the establishment of the national budget system. If you don't have his name by now, here's another clue. During his presidency, the Lincoln Memorial was dedicated. Who was he? Warren G. Harding, 29th President of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. <laughs> With our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. The tall, thin man in the white 
Fitzhugh, who called himself Baker, came down the ladder into the cabin. He flipped on the lights again and stood facing me. A half-smile twisted on his lips. We said nothing. And after a moment, another man appeared at the hatch and called down to the white suit. He's dead. What'll I do with him? Throw him in the ocean. Actually, I had no desire to kill Mr. Geller. But you forced yourself. Had he offered his cooperation, he would be alive this minute. Yeah, he's in the water, but those shots are sure to bring somebody. And we must expedite matters as quickly as possible. Mr. Dollar, where is the tool kit? The tool kit? Oh, come, Mr. Dollar. The shooting has forced me to a tight schedule. I want to know what Geller did with the tools. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. Hank. Yes, sir. Now, wait a minute. Oh. As you can see, Mr. Dollar, I mean to have the information one way or another. Look, yeah, uh... I told... One moment, Hank. Mr. Dollar, I was prepared to offer the late Mr. Geller $5,000 for the tool kit. I'll make you the same offer. It's a good offer. But how can I give you something I don't know anything about? 10000 I don't know anything about a tool kit. You've been with Mr. Geller? Sure. I can't believe you were discussing the weather. Oh, hardly. I'm an insurance investigator. I'm investigating Frank Meadows' murder. Can you prove it? Certainly. I... Oh, something wrong? My wallet is in Geller's pocket. I'm not lying. I think Geller sent for you and told you where he hid the tool kit. Look, I found Geller hiding on the boat. He pulled a gun on me and I... Time is too short. Hank. Now look, I'm telling you that... Oh! Where is it? I don't know. Oh! The tool kit, Mr. Dollar. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Baker's handyman beat me until I was asleep, trying to make me give up the information Geller had passed on a few minutes before he was killed. I don't know how long I was out, but when I came to, I could hear breakers. I was lying on the beach looking up at the big moon and feeling my head throb as though it was stuck on the end of a drumstick. Well, I managed to sit up and look around. I had no idea where I was, but a long groove in the sand that stretched away from me showed clearly that I'd been dragged from the street several hundred feet behind me. I stumbled to my feet. And that's when I saw her. Walking along by the water, headed my way. Her soft blonde hair blowing in the casual breeze. She was barefoot and wearing white shorts and a terry cloth shirt. I guess it was a little cool for the black bathing suit. She stopped when she saw me. Oh, good evening. Hello. Mr. Dollar, you're, you're bleeding. Yeah, yeah, it happens sometimes. What are you doing out here? I'm waking up. What are you doing? Well, I was just taking a walk. But you know, your face is all bruised. How far is your house? Down the beach, about a mile. You think you could scare up some iodine? Yes. Come on. Oh. Still a little dizzy. Well, here. Put your arm around me. Better? Hmm. What? I leaned on Mrs. Meadows while she steered me toward her house. Her hair smelled clean and fresh with just a touch of perfume. In the house, she found the iodine and touched up the sore spots. It's all hurt. Oh. oh sorry. Yeah. All right, I'll make it. Well, what in the world happened? You know a man named Baker? Baker? Oh, no. Runs around with a handyman named Hank. No, I've never heard of him. I found Dave Geller tonight. Where? On the J-Bell. On the J-Bell? Why would he go there? Best place to hide. Last place the police would look. Did he do this to you? Oh, no. Hank did. With Baker's blessings. But why? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. When I found Geller, he was hiding on the J-Bell. He pulled a gun on me. Then Baker and Hank showed up, and it turned into a shooting match. Do you know anything about some kind of a tool kit? Tool kit? I know it sounds silly, but Geller got killed for it. I nearly took the same trip. Because of a tool kit? I don't see what... Before Geller got killed, he told me to go to Bernie's garage. That's on Maple Street. He told me to tell Bernie that he sent me, 
And to ask for the toolkit. I still don't understand what's so important about a toolkit. I don't know, but something is. Your husband was probably killed for the same reason. What are you going to do? Go over to Bernie's garage and take a look at this toolkit. Do me a favor. Certainly. Call Lieutenant Solomon and tell him where I've gone. Tell him to meet me there. All right. Oh, I haven't got a car. Still down at the landing. Use mine. I'll get you the key. Thanks. I drove her car over to the garage on Maple Street, parked it, and got out. The garage was open, and the sign over the door read 24-hour service. I went in and found a mechanic stretched out on a bench, sound asleep. Hey. Hey. Come on, come on. Wake up. Okay, okay. I'm up. No, I'm awake. Yes, I'm really knocking it off. Where can I find Bernie? You just woke him up. Dave Geller sent me over. That's all? Yeah. He said to pick up the toolkit. He did, eh? Yeah, he did. Now, where's the toolkit? How do I know Dave sent you? Because I said he did. Something so important about a toolkit? Heck no. But when Dave left it here, he said be sure and don't give it to no one except him. I can't just hand it over to you because you tell me Dave sent you. You better have Dave call me. He'd have a hard time talking with his mouth full of water. What you mean? He was killed and dumped in the bay. <laughs> now, Lieutenant Solomon will be here in a few minutes, so wheel out that toolkit. Dave was killed? That's right. First Frank and then... The toolkit, huh? Well, what's the matter? You a cop? No, I'm not a cop. Then I'm sorry. I'm I... an insurance investigator. I'm investigating two murders. Frank Meadows and Dave Geller. Insurance investigator. Well, that's kind of like a cop, ain't it? Everything but the feet. Mm-hmm. Got any identification? Now, look, are you going to get that tool kit or do I have okay, to... Okay, okay, no, 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 you don't have to keep it up. I'll, I'll get it. I'll... It looks like somebody got kind of rough with you. Yeah, kind of. Uh, I got it stored in the parts department. How come you're so interested in a bunch of tools? Have you seen them? No. Box is locked tight. There it is. It's plain old toolkit. Yeah. You got something I can bust this lock? Oh, no. Wait a Crowbar minute. Crowbar or something. Well, maybe we better wait for Lieutenant Solomon. If you ain't got a key, I... I... Hey, get me that crowbar. Uh, okay. Okay. It's against my principles. If Dave wanted you to pick up the kid, he, he should call. He's dead. Remember? Oh, yes. Do you know who killed him? A man named Baker. Uh, here's your bar. Thanks. Baker. Baker? Never heard of him. Oh, hey, I, I got a customer. Might be coming. Yeah, yeah. I lifted the lid and looked in. I couldn't have been more surprised. Because there in the box was exactly what I didn't expect to find. Tools. About 50 of them. All sizes, brand new. All the tools were painted black. But on the handle of a large wrench, there was a small space that had been scraped down to the metal. I picked the wrench up and looked at it more closely. I took out a pocket knife and scraped some shavings from the metal. I stood up and held the shavings under the light. And then I understood a whole lot of things. The shavings were solid platinum. Hey, mister, you got visitors. We meet again, Mr. Dollar. It was Barton W. Baker, complete with white suit, gun, and bodyguard. He looked at the platinum wrench I held in my hand, smiled, and moved slowly across the room toward me. I, I couldn't help it, mister. They held a gun on me and made me take him back here. Get up. Take the old man out to the garage, Hank, and guard him until I'm finished with Mr. Dollar. Yes, sir. Furnish, mister. I'm Go on, old man. Go on. Well, Mr. Dollar, you were lying to us. I thought so. That's why you let me live. So I'd lead you here. Precisely. The tools are platinum. Of course. But you knew that. Uh-uh. Geller just told me where to find him. 
I had no idea what they were. Well, I'm afraid your curiosity will be short-lived. I kind of thought that was the way it was. You killed Frank Meadows because he discovered the secret of the tool. Yes. If he had simply picked me up and landed me as he was paid to do, I... I take it you're an alien, Mr. Baker? Correct. Would I know your government, Mr. Baker? Unless you happen to be deaf, dumb, and blind. Now, if you'll just proceed with me back to the garage... Uh, one more question. Yes? How did Dave Geller get hold of the kit? He and Meadows were offered a large sum of money for picking me up on the other side of the border. Aboard the boat, Geller grew suspicious of the kit. And knowing that I could not possibly notify the authorities of its theft, he forced me at gunpoint to go ashore and leave the kit with him. Fortunately, I got to a phone and notified our operatives in Los Angeles. They met the boat when it docked. And killed Meadows, but Geller escaped. Correct. Now, Mr. Dollar, I'm in a great hurry. And I... Well, I missed another shooting, but so did Baker, for that matter. When Hank yelled, Baker turned just enough to give me a chance to swing the heavy platinum wrench. What's it all about, Dollar? I thought you'd never get here, Lieutenant. Mrs. Meadows called and said to get right over. You know something? I think you owe her an apology. Okay, so she'll get an apology after you tell me who the guy on the floor is and who the guy was I had to kill in the garage. Here. Have a platinum wrench. A what? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Baker is going to have one very expensive headache. On the way over to my motel, I explained the event to Solomon, who did a little mumbling and shaking himself. Then, after a fresh shower and a change of clothes, I went over to Mrs. Meadows and expressed my most heartfelt thanks. Expense account item three, $176.85. Motel bill and expenses for the next two days while I hung around Newport resting up. I saw Mrs. Meadows a few times before I left, but for some reason I didn't get much of a tan. Expense account items five and six, $225 car rental, plane fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $604.15. Oh, yes. Barton Baker comes up for trial on illegal entry, smuggling, and three counts of espionage. I hope he enjoys his stay in the USA. Here's truly, Johnny Dollar.